Hi everyone, welcome to Math Sucks. This video is going to help you pass Algebra 2. So today we're going to be going over how to solve logarithmic equations by looking at three different examples. But before we dive in, let's first go over some simple log equations and some log properties that we're going to be looking at today. So logarithms have a certain notation. They look something like this, log base 10 of 10 equals 1. So this is the log notation, but it actually has an equivalent exponential notation. So if this is the log notation, if we were to write this in exponential notation, it would be 10 to the first equals 10. And all I'm doing here is rewriting this, and it kind of follows this swooping arrow, this swooping pattern. If you notice 10 to the first equals 10. So we're just going in order, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3. So let's, let's look at another one. So let's look at log base 10 times 100, not times, log base 10 of 100 equals 2. So in exponential form, this would be written as 10 squared equals 100. So notice this also just follows that swooping arrow, that swooping pattern, 10 to the second is 100. And then this pattern can just keep going. So if we look at one more, log base 10 of 1,000 equals 3. This is really equal to 10 to the third, which is 1,000. And that's really the basics of log equations and solving them. And we're going to do ones that are a little bit harder today. So before we even get into our questions, first I want to go over some log properties. So there are three different pro log properties that we're going to be using here today. The product rule, the quotient rule, and the power rule. The product rule tells us when we're adding logs with the same base, we can multiply the arguments inside the parentheses together. The quotient rule tells us when we are subtracting logs with the same base, so this time we're subtracting, we can actually divide the arguments inside the parentheses. And the last rule we're using today, the power rule, tells us when there's a number outside the argument on the left of our log, it can actually be brought into that argument as an exponent. So remember, these only work for logs that are the same base, so if they're different, you have to convert them, which we're not going to get into today. Um, so if, the, if these rules are a little overwhelming, they don't make sense, don't worry because we're going to we're going to look at this step by step. So now let's look at our first question. We have log base 4 of x plus log base 4 of x plus 6 equals 2 and we need to find x. So right away we, we want to look if this matches any of our properties. Is there any way we could simplify this more? So we're adding, we have the same bases. There's log base 4, log base 4. So we could definitely use one of our properties. And we're adding, so that means we could use the product rule. This kind of looks like the product rule. So to rewrite this using the product rule, we're just going to write log base 4 of x. And now we're just multiplying these together. x times x plus 6 equals 2. So we can simplify this a little bit more. So let's do that, log base 4. So we're just multiplying this out. Log base 4 of x squared plus 6x equals 2. So we want to find x. So to make life easier for ourselves, what we're going to do is put uh, our equation into exponential form. So we're, we're going to draw a little swooping arrow so we know what to do. So we're going to go 4 squared is equal to x squared plus 6x. So now we just have a regular algebraic equation here and we can just um, factor as normal. So this is really equal to 16 equals x squared plus 6x. And now I'm just bringing that 16 to the other side, x squared plus 6x minus 16 equals 0. Um, so here we could factor this out uh, and we get x minus 2 times x plus 8 equals 0. And then we can see that x equals 2 and x equals negative 8. So, so another uh, important fact about logs is that we can never actually have a negative in a log argument. So we can actually cannot have negative 8 in this log. So we're going to reject this answer. And that leaves it with, with our one answer x equals 2. 
So that's our first question. We get x equals 2. Let's look at another example applying a different property. We have log base 3 of x to the fifth minus log base 3 of x to the third equals 4. So we'll go through a checklist. Do they have the same bases, log base 3, log base 3? Yes, they both have a base of 3. And this time there's a subtraction sign, which means we're going to be using our quotient rule. So a subtraction sign with the quotient rule means we can actually divide these two arguments. So let's rewrite this as log base 3 of x to the fifth over x to the third. So these two are equal, equals 4. So let's simplify this even further. x to the fifth divided by x to the third divide these two. We actually end up subtracting the exponents. So 5 minus 3 is 2. Those are just some exponent rules. Equals 4. And now we want to convert this again into our exponential equation so we could solve for x. So draw our swooping arrow and we have 3 to the 4th is equal to x squared. 3 to the 4th is 81 equals x squared. And now just take the square root of both sides and we end up with x equals 9. And that's our answer. So for our third question, we have some more things going on here. We have 2 log base 10 of x plus log base 10 of 4 equals 2. So looks like there's a couple of our rules going on here. We have the same bases, both base 10. We're adding them together. So we know we're going to be using the product rule. Then there's this little tube over here hanging out. So this is actually going to be our power rule. Using our power rule, we can move our exponent inside this argument. So using the power rule, we can say log base 10 of x squared. And then this would just remain the same. Log base 10 of 4 equals 2. And now we can use our product rule, mul multiplying our two arguments together. So we have log base 10 of 4x squared equals 2. Not looking so scary now, right? So now let's draw our swooping arrow so we can convert this into exponential form. 10 squared equals 4x squared. We can, 10 squared is just 100, 10 times 10, right? So 100 equals 4x squared. Divide both sides by 4 to get x alone. And we get 25 equals x squared. And now just take the square root of both sides and we get 5 equals x. And that's our answer. So if you have any questions about anything we did here, please don't forget to comment below. Also, if this video helped you at all, please hit the like button so it can help more people. See you next time. Need more practice? Check out mathsucks.org for more questions. Link below. Also, don't forget to subscribe. Happy calculating!